Hello, I am Dr. Anil Goody, consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. Today we talk about endometriomas, one of the commonest benign tumours that we see in our practice and how much it does trouble us, doesn't it? It causes immense trauma to patients as well as challenges the best of surgeons and medical men. The question which we need to answer is, do endometriomas lower ovarian reserve? Now often you'll ask me, why is that important? Let's take it into consideration. A patient walks into your clinic. She has a four centimeter endometrioma. It is absolutely painless and you have now been brought into this discussion where you have to decide the pros and cons of going in for surgery or leaving it untouched. And today I'm going to talk about a paper that briefly looks at this. Should you leave endometriomas alone? Do endometriomas have an impact on AMH if they are left alone? And that is something which we'll discuss. It is called the ERROR study, endometrioma related reduction in ovarian reserve, a prospective longitudinal study. We know that endometriosis affects about 1.5% of all women. 40% of subfertile women with endometriosis have endometriomas. There is no doubt that endometriosis and endometriomas both have an impact on ovarian reserve. But again, if you see a large majority of surgeries or studies have looked at what happens to AMH post-surgery. This very group which published in Fertility Sterility also reported that women with endometriomas had a lower AMH and an anterior follicle count when compared to healthy women. It's quite an interesting study. Women 18 to 40 years, at least one endometrioma more than 3 cm, while not on treatment. Prospective comparison, the control group was compromised of women in reproductive age group and not from a gynecology clinic. They were residents and nurses. AMH levels were taken at recruitment and in six months time. But what does it show? If you have a look at the, the slide, the median age of serum AMH decline was quite dramatic in those women with endometriomas. 26.4% decline in AMH a 7.4% decline in controls. When you further break this down to a subgroup analysis, you realize that women who have bilateral endometriomas will drop their AMH by 34.62% in this study. Well, that with unilateral will drop it from 20 to 22.35% in this study. What it does tell us is that endometriomas will lower AMH if they're left as they are. Again, these are endometriomas of more than three centimeter, not one or two centimeter and small endometriomas. They seem to affect ovarian reserve in two different ways. One is very simple. There is an ovarian compression. These endometriomas compress the rest of the ovary and they have an impact on circulation and follicular loss. So with that pressure, it seems to affect blood flow and eventually follicles seem to start dying. The other concept is that endometriosis is also considered to be an inflammation. Again, one of the inflammatory markers here, one, two, five is raised. And this inflammation of the endometriosis could also cause follicular damage. And where do we get this evidence from? One, we get it from doing diathermy to endometriosis. We know that a diathermy has a worse impact than when you use sutures because the diathermy affects the blood flow directly. 
There is immediate decline of AMH, probably due to thermal damage. But again, in six months, you end up seeing more thermal, more uh, decline in AMH. And it's because that burning, the diatomy of blood vessels, seems to start decreasing and the blood flow. And that decline in blood flow eventually starts affecting the AMH. And it seems that a decline six months later may be due to vascularization. But we also remember that what does the endometrium contain? Quite often blood, high levels of iron, and it seems to trigger reactive oxygen species and may continue to cause decline in the ovarian reserve. How does the study help us? The study helps us because when a woman comes to you with an endometrioma, it allows you to counsel and tell her that if she has got a three or four centimeter endometrioma, it is going to increase. Now, do we remove it? And that's a completely different discussion. But this is a discussion which is worthy of having that an endometrioma on its own will continue to decline the AMH. There have also been two large cohort studies with endometriosis, which shows that women with endometriosis have menopause earlier than without endometriosis. In conclusion, women with an endometrioma will experience progressive decline of AMH faster than women who do not have an endometrioma. Again, that's the teaching for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do share this video and let this teaching spread. I'll see you again next week. Thank you very much.